Fallout post Bethesda has been a mixed grab bag to say the least. After the success of Fallout 3, the series was cemented as a landmark of the studio, alongside Bethesda's flagship series, The Elder Scrolls. What would follow can only be described as a roller coaster for fans of the Fallout franchise. While Bethesda seemed to be stripping away elements from the games, they were adding some pretty immersive worlds and excellent gameplay mechanic improvements. Arguably one of the highest points of this roller coaster ride that is the Fallout series was Fallout New Vegas, released in 2010. It would see Bethesda pass the reins of the IP to Obsidian Entertainment, and this was notable at the time because a few of the previous developers of the Fallout series were at Obsidian, and set to work on this new post-apocalyptic adventure. Fallout New Vegas would put the player in the shoes of the Courier, robbed and left for dead on the outskirts of New Vegas in the year 2281. This is 40 years after the events of Fallout 2, and 204 years after the world was plunged into radioactive fire during the Great War. Adding vast gameplay improvements on what was offered with Fallout 3, many people were delighted with Fallout New Vegas. In hindsight, comparing the future games in the series with New Vegas, it's easy to see why, when it comes to the Fallout franchise, Fallout New Vegas is OP. Casping the night tonight, and for two weeks straight. Before we start, make sure to like the video if you enjoy it, and that helps the channel out a lot. If you want to see more Fallout content like this, subscribe to stay updated on my uploads. Joining the Discord server in the description below is a fantastic way to stay connected and to be notified when things hit the channel. Thank you. Fallout New Vegas starts by showing us a pan through the Lucky 38 Casino. Dust fills the air, and posters, disheveled but seemingly untouched, hang from the walls. Blue Moon by Frank Sinatra plays over a speaker as we leave the empty casino space and find ourselves on the Strip, the heart of New Vegas. Drunken NCR soldiers stumble through the street as we pan further. The neon fills the sky, drowning out any natural light source. It causes the city to glow, like a diamond in the wasteland. Securitrons rush to keep the peace. We see a veteran ranger taking aim and firing a shot from the New Vegas sign. The bullet travels in slow motion, past Camp McCarran and the El Rey Motel, and into the skull of a raider at the end of the street. Outside the city, Legion forces gather, and even further back, we finally see the fate of the courier. Then, Ron Perlman welcomes us to the series with another stunning narration. War. War never changes. When atomic fire consumed the earth, those who survived did so in great underground vaults. When they opened, their inhabitants set out across the ruins of the old world to build new societies, establishing villages, forming tribes. As decades passed, what had been the American Southwest united beneath the flag of the new California Republic dedicated to old world values of democracy and the rule of law. As the Republic grew, so did its needs. Scouts spread east, seeking territory and wealth in the dry and merciless expanse of the Mojave Desert. They returned with tales of a city untouched by the warheads that had scorched the rest of the world and a great wall spanning the Colorado River. The NCR mobilized its army and sent it east to occupy Hoover Dam and restore it to working condition. But across the Colorado, another society had arisen under a different flag. A vast army of slaves forged from the conquest of 86 tribes, Caesar's Legion. Four years have passed since the Republic held the dam just barely against the Legion's onslaught. The Legion did not retreat. Across the river, it gathers strength. Campfires burn, training drums beat. Through it all, the New Vegas Strip has stayed open for business under the control of its mysterious overseer, Mr. House, and his army of rehabilitated tribals and police robots. You are a courier hired by the Mojave Express to deliver a package to the New Vegas Strip. What seemed like a simple delivery job has taken a turn for the worse. You got what you were after, so pay up. You're crying in the rain, Pally. <laughs> Guess who's waking up over here? Time to cash out. Will you get it over with? 
Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face. But I ain't a fink. Dig? You've made your last delivery, kid. Sorry you got twisted up in this scene. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. What? Fallout New Vegas sets the scene perfectly as we assume the role of the courier. One thing I like a lot about the start of New Vegas is the amount of freedom it allows. There's no set backstory, no family that you are bound to. You simply were trying to deliver a package, a strange package, but nothing that a courier wouldn't be used to. After being robbed, shot, and left for dead, it seems only logical that you would ask around about what happened or even try to find the people responsible. Through Doc Mitchell, we are introduced to the town of Good Springs. This acts as a way to set up your character. Doc will ask you about your name, have you test your vitals to set up your special stats, and ask you a series of questions to determine the type of person that you are. Just a formality. Ain't like I expect to find you got a family history of getting shot in the head. Another thing Fallout New Vegas does incredibly well, the natural way you set up information about your character is a really nice touch. You will learn from Doc that a robot named Victor is responsible for digging you out of a shallow grave, bringing you to the doctor, and essentially saving your life. After leaving the doc's house, we can find Victor outside. The robot will tell you a bit about himself, but overall he seems confused about why he's even out here. The people in town seem mixed about him as well, with some not trusting him and others just letting him be. New Vegas will give us a tutorial of sorts with sunny smiles, an excellent and skippable way to introduce the players to the mechanics of the game. It's good for the XP and allows for a lovely stepping stone into the rest of the activities here in Good Springs. Sooner or later, we will see a confrontation between the Powder Gangers and the townsfolk of Good Springs over a caravaneer that is hiding out in town. This gives us a great way to look at the faction reputation system in New Vegas, and also sets the scene for how most of New Vegas will work. You are free to choose your side or remain independent. These choices will have positive and negative effects, depending on how you interpret that moving forward. Fallout New Vegas holds a lot of content. We can sit here and talk for hours about everything this game has to offer, much like all the Fallout games. And I'm going to go over some significant parts of the main quest and story, and touch on a few of the side quests afterwards perhaps. So if you are watching this and you think I left anything out that I should have talked about, hit the comments. One of the best parts of making videos is reading and responding to your thoughts about the topics, and I look forward to checking them out here. Leaving Good Springs will lead the courier on an adventure across the Mojave, working closer and closer to the shining diamond of the desert, New Vegas. The biggest news in the Mojave at the time of the game is the coming battle between the Legion and the NCR. Hoover Dam, a tremendous source of power and a prominent strategic military point, seems to be in the crosshairs. These two factions have fought over the spot before, with the NCR barely coming out victorious. The Mojave remembers this bloody battle, and everyone is on edge about the inevitable sequel. One of the moments we see this the clearest comes after visiting the NCR's Mojave outpost. There, we can meet a few of the NCR soldiers holding camp in the Mojave, and one of them is a real hardass named Ghost. She's a sniper that has noticed some smoke coming from Nipton and since she can't leave her post, she asks the courier to check it out. In Nipton, we see the destruction that the Legion can cause to a town. People have been crucified and burned in a pile in the center. The Legion held a lottery. The winner was set free, the second place got maimed, and everyone else would lose their life, with their position in the lottery determining how quick or painful their death will be. Volpus and Colta, the leader of Caesar's Frumentari, will approach the courier here and ask them to spread the word of what the Legion has done. Reporting this back to the Mojave outpost will strike fear in the NCR. Even Ghost seems a bit bothered by this news. To see these hardened soldiers get worked up it brings the message home about the upcoming war. If these guys are that worried, the rest of the Mojave must be a wreck. The Legion definitely gets painted to be the bad guys in the story, and I'm not really going to argue that. They are glorified raiders and slavers. New Vegas allows you to interpret this in your own way, though. It is possible to have good karma inside with the Legion. Same goes for bad karma inciting with the NCR. This type of choice is great to see in Fallout, and the morality lying somewhere in the gray is something very true to the original idea of the series. The courier will arrive at Novak on their journey and see Victor again. The robot almost seems to be following the courier, and his actions and speech are becoming peculiar as well. Novak will host new information on where the guys that shot us went. Following these clues eventually will lead us to New Vegas, or at least the outskirts, Freeside. This area has some of the best flavors the game has to offer. Factions like the Kings, who have taken up refuge in an old Elvis Presley school of impersonation, reside here. And the group would go through old holotapes found around the school and learn to mimic them accurately. This is an excellent nod to the King of Rock and Roll, Elvis himself, 
but it also adds a great and believable faction into the Fallout lore. The gate to New Vegas lies in Freeside and is guarded by these Securitrons. There are a variety of ways to get in, and once we do, the courier is prompted to visit the Lucky 38 immediately by Victor for a meeting with Mr. House. Fallout New Vegas' is answer to Howard Hughes in the post-apocalypse. Mr. House is one of the most interesting characters in the Fallout universe. He's kept himself alive using his wealth and technology, and though one may assume that he is just an AI using a screen to communicate, Mr. House is flesh and blood, though the years have taken a toll on his body. House is the one who wanted the Platinum Chip, the courier was set to deliver. Vinny, the one in the fancy suit that robbed us, he uncovered information about what Mr. House has in store. The Platinum Chip is the key to this. House wants the courier to retrieve the Platinum Chip and return it to him. He offers quite a bit of caps as well. New Vegas opens up a bit after this and gives us a tremendous amount of choice moving forward. House, NCR, and the Legion all have a vested interest in Hoover Dam and New Vegas proper. Once we do make contact with Benny, we can learn that he has reprogrammed a Securitron for himself. Yes Man, who acts as the independent option. Yes Man is programmed to agree with everything he is told to do. So it is just a matter of taking out Mr. House and replacing him with Yes Man to get that moving. The courier entering the Lucky 38 is a huge deal. Everyone in New Vegas noticed it and the word will soon get around the Mojave. No one has ever stepped foot inside the casino as far as anyone can remember. Benny managed to dig up enough information or something to start a whole plan, but apparently House has something buried under the fort where the Legion resides. The chip can activate some upgrades that Mr. House has planned for his Securitrons, making them far more potent and more efficient than before. The NZR quickly sends someone to intercept the courier, as does the Legion. The word has spread that we have access to the Lucky 38, and everyone in the Mojave is curious. This leads to picking sides. Yes Man will allow you to shape the Mojave in your own way, House looks to see New Vegas get restored to its former glory, to become a safe haven in the wasteland. The NCR wished to annex the area for the Republic, incorporating into its growing nation out west, offering safety and the rule of law if successful. The Legion has a much more complicated view of things. Caesar is looking for his Rome. New Vegas fits the bill perfectly, so he wishes to annex it for his flag and finally become the legitimate society he wants the Legion to be. He sees the NCR as nothing more than corrupted and misguided people, and under his banner, the goal would be to never see the world get hit like it did in the Great War ever again. Caesar vows to bring death to those who do not accept his banner. Join, follow, or die. Follow New Vegas allows you to shape the Mojave pretty much any way you see fit. The only certainty is that there will be a war at Hooper Dam. The courier will aid whatever faction they want or not. The battle is the end all for the Mojave. Whatever faction wins this time is taking the dam for good. And this sets a static end to New Vegas. Once you go forward with the fight of Hoover Dam, there's no going back. And that's something I prefer, and I was always excited to see in this game. Having an actual end to the game puts the rest of the game into perspective and makes the battle feel all that more important. The main quest is truly fantastic when it comes to New Vegas, though in typical Fallout fashion, the game offers plenty of side work to be done, incredibly interesting companions to meet, and vast locations to explore. One thing I think benefits New Vegas over its contemporaries is the setting. Taking place in the Mojave Desert and so close to where the first two games took place is a great way to see some of the things that have happened since the events of Fallout 2, such as the NCR spreading their influence and Raider gangs like the Khans finding refuge where they can. The references and callbacks to the later games are an excellent touch for anyone who has played them. They don't stand out so much that you need to have played these games for these things to make sense though. A common misconception is that New Vegas is just Van Buren, the cancelled Fallout 3 that was in production at Interplay before they went under. This isn't exactly the case. If Van Buren were to be a part of the timeline, New Vegas would be its sequel. A lot of the events of Van Buren were not recycled for New Vegas, they were built on. In some cases, directly. While Van Buren's stories and activities are not technically a part of the canon, parts of New Vegas accept them and continue what would have been in that version of Fallout 3. Looking at Fallout New Vegas on a broad scale, it really did bring a lot of the Fallout feel back to the franchise. Adding improvements to gameplay and the RPG system from Fallout 3, choices felt like they actually mattered, actions had weight, the factions seemed alive, and you really felt compelled to chase down your attackers. Something that knocks New Vegas up a notch or two for me, as I said before, is the way it starts. I love the idea of getting robbed and trying to piece together what to do to move forward. I prefer this to finding lost family members. In Fallout 3's case, it made the story feel like it was that of James's and not the player. And in Fallout 4, I felt no real connection to Sean before losing him. Nothing really drove me to care. 
I felt like going through the main quests and the stories because I had to in order to progress the game. Sure, I was curious in the first few times around it was enjoyable to see these stories play out though. New Vegas actually makes me want to pursue the main quest. The mystery behind the attackers, Victor following you and helping you along the way, leading you across the vast Mojave Desert, finally meeting up with Benny and choosing his fate, very satisfying. Of course, other Fallout games have had great and memorable moments, New Vegas just spoke to me differently. While Fallout 2 may be the most nostalgic title in the Fallout series to me, being one of the first RPGs I had ever played in my introduction to the franchise, Fallout New Vegas almost seems to perfect what was started there. It truly feels like a sequel to Fallout 2. New and familiar faces, a revamped gameplay system, and a vast desert to get lost in. All of these reasons are why I think Fallout New Vegas is OP. I want to thank you for checking out my New Vegas video. Again, if you liked what you saw, leave a thumbs up as it can help the channel in significant ways. Subscribe if you want to see more Fallout content like this, and follow me on Twitter for memes and big dreams. I want to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members. Your continued support keeps my channel running, and I'm super grateful. Special thanks goes out to my biggest supporters, Kim Jong-un, Popo Hum, your typical redneck, Fireflare, Corbin King, James Starkey, and Primark Mustard. Thank you so much for the support. I will catch you guys in the next one. It has been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die.